Backyard Barbecue by J. W. Ixen. It was such a cold and dark night. The chilling air drove goosebumps through Keith's body. It was a summer darkness blanketing the whole city. The streets and roads were empty. In the middle of the road, in Indiana, Keith was walking from the grocery store to his home. A banquet in those bags was a small spectacle. Not much at all. Wafering about the air, perfuming the surroundings, was the sweet aroma of hickory, barbecue sauce, and meat. A scent along with the look of black smoke swirled about. A noble work of art of backyard barbecue. About him stood out against the sickening smog of the city was a smell combating the stench. A smell so strong and rich. It smelled like turkey, steak, hot dogs. Just so many juicy meat scents causing Keith's mouth to water. However, one smell in the whole combination eluded him. What is that smell? Keith thought. Keith kept walking. The smell was a cross between feces and what seemed to be a rich, strong bacterial odor as well as permeating and nauseating. The temperature that day was 85 and the awful acrid odor ruined the wonderful meat smell somehow and it was very sad because he had enjoyed the barbecue scent for a while. An almost coppery metallic component of a musky sweet perfume. Methane. The scent was nauseating and sweet, putrid and steaky. The smell was so thick and rich that he could almost taste it. Keith gasped as he fell to the concrete, losing his bags of everyday supper and breaking his nose. Blood seeped from his nostrils as well as his mouth. It was after smelling his own blood he, re he had realized it had, it had an iron and metal smell, taste of salty, sweet, metallic, sour, and sticky. Keith realized that half of the scent he was smelling from the barbecue was blood, human blood. Keith pulled himself up his face now clad in satin, sticky, and covered with blood, eyes slightly burning. As he made his way towards the smell, Keith discarded the food. The night got darker. The dead smell was now more potent than ever. He no longer smelled the sweetness of a grilled meat, but rather the smell of decayed burnt flesh. Keith, in his running, came across a pristine white Victorian home. Smoke billowed from behind the house. Keith ran faster around the house to the backyard where the smoke had come from. His heart began to race as he heard sizzling, becoming louder as he got closer. Then, he heard heavy slabs of wet meat being tossed into the grill, as more sizzling could be heard. Breezes of air blew the raw stench faster towards Keith. It was so dark, he couldn't see a thing. The burning from his own blood, plus the smoke, did not help. Keith ran as fast as he could, getting deeper into the sweet, yet metallic stink of smoke. Suddenly, Keith fell over a pile of something. It didn't take him long to figure it was parts of the dead. Each piece he laid on felt like a hand or someone's face. 
Pain rushed over Keith's body as he had kicked his leg out to try and get up, only to knock something over onto him. A grill. Hot burning grease spilled over him, making Keith scream. Footsteps came close, then stopped right in front of the pile of bodies, the grill, and Keith. If I can't see him, he can't see me, Keith thought. A clammy hand grabbed Keith's body, lifting him up like a rag doll. Ah, more for my guests, a voice exclaimed loudly. Keith gasped as his vision cleared just a bit more. Before him sat a family of skeletal bodies just sitting meat dripping, eyes draping from sockets. We have a new guest for our backyard barbecue, the man said to the lifeless party. Keith fainted, but woke immediately after feeling the sight of his face searing. His body bent over the bloody red grill, and nearby was a plate of turkey steak, burgers, and hot dogs, ready to be eaten by the hungry mouths. Even closer by was a sign that read, Indianapolis Morgue.